Most folks know my friend Raphael Mandelman from attending Harvey Milk meetings. He's been the current, the, the past, he's the past president for the last two years. Okay, I think I got that out right. <laughs> and for folks that don't know, he's also seated on the Board of Appeal. Many folks think, well, what does that have to do with the cannabis community? Do cannabis issues come before the Board of Appeals? Absolutely, they do. And what we want to look at in candidates that we support is their voting records on these issues. And I'm happy to say that our friend Raphael has 100% voted in support of every cannabis issue that's come before I'd like to bring up Raphael Mandelman. Yay! Oh, thank you, Shona. Thank you, Shona. You're welcome. Thank you, Actress of Love. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my race and about me, and I know a lot of you already, um, some of the challenges and some of the successes we've had. Um, and then, you know, uh, we can have a little conversation. Um, so for those of you, well, Introducing myself to those of you who don't know me, I'm Raphael Mandelman. I'm running for supervisor in District 8. District 8 uh, is Harvey Milk's district, or the descendant of what was Harvey Milk's district, although back in the day it was District 5 and included the hate. Today it is District 8. It's a little more conservative region, <laughs> Glen Park and Diamond Heights, and has a little bit more of that flavor, but the card of the Castro is right in District 8. So it's Castro, Noe, Glen Park, a little bit of the mission. Both Triangle and then up into Twin Peaks. And that's the district where I'm running. Um, I think there's all sorts of reasons why people in my district should vote for me, but one of them I think is I'm actually the most qualified candidate running for the race. Um, I have been, since I, I'm a lawyer, and uh, since I graduated from law school, the work I've done has been for local governments and affordable housing developers. And stuff that's for local governments is to help them deal with things like development applications, development proposals. When a developer wants to come in and do something, I help the local community figure out is this something they want, what do they want in exchange for it, if they want to say no, how do they say no, if they want to say yes, what's the smartest, best way to say yes. Um, and I also help affordable housing developers figure out how to bring together the financing they need to make their projects happen so that we can have more housing for people of all income levels. When I'm not being a lawyer, um, as Jonah said, I'm, uh, I'm a commissioner on the Board of Appeals, where you hear appeals of all different kinds of decisions in the city, but a lot of land use, um, a lot of planning, building stuff. But also we've seen a fair number of, uh, well, at least a few, um, tax club issues come before us. And as Jonah said, I think I have a perfect 100% voting record. I do not, I am, uh, I am probably the most anti-cigarette person on the, on the, not universally popular, um, but, um, but I'm probably the most pro-pot person. Yeah. Um, and then as you guys know me from my Democratic Party activism, I've been elected to the Democratic County Central Committee twice now. Um, I'm running for re-election in June, uh, but I've also been president of Harvey's Club and your club uh, for, uh, I was for two years. And prior to that, I was president of the Noe Valley Democratic Club for three years. Um, so that's kind of some of the experience that I bring to this. I think that I really do have a, the right set of skills for the city to deal with a lot of the really complicated stuff, the difficult challenges. You all know about the local budget um, and what a disaster that is and facing a, a, a budget deficit in excess of $500 million and we've already cut so much that you know that the cuts to come are really going to cut hard um, and hurt a lot of people and I think, you know, I would like to be there to try and help at least make those cuts more wisely and less painful for the most vulnerable. Um, the land use experience I have I think is very relevant. We have a ton of development coming in this area, out in the Bayview, and even some in the district where I'm running, up along Market Street. And, and even the smaller developments that happen within a district kind of can change the character of a neighborhood. And, you know, I think you need someone with that kind of experience as well. And lastly, I'm really, you know, I'm kind of a big government liberal, lefty, progressive. I believe that we need a government that's big enough to, solve, to help us all solve our problems in this very complicated world. If you want that, then you have to believe it's hard to make government work. And I think that a lot of people in San Francisco have the feeling that from Muni to, you know, to planning to all the other aspects in which people relate to government, that it doesn't quite work so well. Um, 
So I would want to work on those things. Elections are about qualifications, but they're also about values. And so I want to tell you a little bit about me and my values and where, where I've gotten my values from. I came to San Francisco, um, and some of you have heard this already, but I came to San Francisco in 1985 when I was 11 years old. And the reason I came here was that my family had sort of fallen apart. My mom um, was sort of teetering on the edge of mental illness until I turned 11. When I, when I was 11, I got diabetes. Her mental illness kind of got sort of overwhelming, and I ended up needing another place to live. I had a grandmother up here, so I moved up here. She wasn't a great place to live, and I ended up basically between 11 and 18 living with four or five different families that weren't my own. Um, now, my experience was not tragic in any respect. I was at good schools. I had families that you know brought me in and you know were very warm to me. And I went off to these great schools. And you know I'm a lawyer. I'm running for supervisor. There's not a lot of like suffering in that. But it did give me at least you know. And then also seeing my mom's experience gave me at least some understanding of the way in which the world doesn't actually work all that well for everybody. And actually, all of us, you know, at some point in our lives, are going to need some amount of help from someone else. You know, and I really believe, from my experience and the experiences that I've seen, the thing I'm saying is that San Francisco, and I believe this, I think San Francisco should be a place where we try to leave nobody behind, where everybody, anybody gets to make a fresh start. Right? And where every kid growing up here, every kid who doesn't have parents basically able to take care of them, has the same set of opportunities to survive and thrive that I did. That's not the reality we live in, right? If you're in the foster care system growing up in San Francisco, you have a real good likelihood of having things turn out very differently from the way that it turned out for me. And that's something, you know, that's sort of part of my core. Now, I think that the people of District 8, although they may have more money than the people in District 6 on average, or more money than some other districts, although they're pretty bougie and affluent up there, I actually think that they're still San Franciscans. That's the premise of this campaign. <coughs> that the values that I just said, you know, Bougie Raphael Mandelman has a set of values about compassion and taking care of people. And that I think the people up there, they may not think of themselves as raging progressives, but I think that they share those values. I think we can touch those values, and that's that's why I'm running. Um, and I think, you know, we've certainly gotten a great response from progressives around the city. Uh, Assemblyman Tom Amiano has endorsed me. Um, supervisors, Campos, Daly, Marr, Mir Karimi, and Avalos have all endorsed me. Uh, school board commissioners, Kim, or President Jane Kim, uh, uh, Kim Stream Office, Sandra Lee Fewer, um, they've all endorsed me. But I've also been getting a lot of support within the district from neighborhood leaders who either like the fact that I'm going to be tough on developers and make sure that they give back to the community, or they're really resonating with some of this compassion message. I, I've talked to an executive from Sun Microsystems who lives essentially in a monster home, who when I was talking to him about the need for pretty neighborhoods and nice buildings, said, wait a minute, I want to hear more about poor kids and what we can do about people who need stuff. And and that's really, you know, heartening to me that even even up there, people still want the same, the same San Francisco we want. So that's what I'm trying to do. I want to be a bridge from, San, from District 8 to the rest of the city. I think the District 8 should be part of the Progressive Coalition and should be working to help solve problems in City Hall. And I think, you know, we have a chance of doing that. We have a really strong opponent in Scott Wiener. He's backed by the mayor. He's backed by Sean Ellsburn. He's backed by a lot of the gay literati. And he's backed by a lot of people who have a much different view of the world from mine and I think from yours. Um, and so it's going to be a hard fight. But I think it's one that, for the first time in the modern incarnation of district elections since 2000, I think it's the first time we can win this year. And I think we will up in District Day. So that's